Greek medical physicians are responsible for the backbone of modern Western medicine. The Greek physician Hippocrates proposed the idea of the four humors. These humors were believed to govern health and temperament in the human body. Hippocrates' name might sound a bit humorous, but his ideas were no joke to the ancient Greeks. In fact, you could say Hippocrates was the original humorist in the medical field. The four humors were blood, yellow bile, black bile, and phlegm. Blood was the most important humor, giving us that spark of energy and a rosy complexion. An excess of blood could lead to aggressive behavior and fevers, while a deficiency might cause weakness and pale skin. It's like the Goldilocks of bodily fluids. You need just the right amount to keep things running smoothly. Yellow bowel or collar was associated with fire. It's believed to shape bold and assertive characters. It originates in the liver, influencing both the gallbladder and upper digestive system. It is characterized as being hot and dry. An excess can lead to aggression or feverish symptoms. So next time someone suggests you cut back on drinking, just say, actually, I'm keeping my yellow bile in check to avoid getting aggressive. Black bile, also known as melakini, is the humor associated with the element of earth. It is believed to influence our mood and overall well-being. People with a dominant black bile humor were thought to be introspective, analytical, and cautious. Black bile is thought to be produced in the spleen. In the humoral system, black bile is considered cold and dry, and an excess of it can lead to feelings of sadness or depression. I guess that explains why Aristotle was so clever with his one-liners. Phlegm, the humor associated with the element of water, was believed to influence our mental clarity and emotional balance. People with a dominant phlegm humor were thought to be calm, collected, and empathetic, much like the soothing nature of water. Phlegm is thought to be produced in the brain and lungs and is connected to the upper digestive tract. In the humoral system, phlegm is considered cold and moist, and an excess of it can lead to feelings of apathy or sluggishness. In ancient Greece, trepanation was a common practice that involved drilling or scraping a hole in the skull to treat various ailments including head injuries, mental illness, and headaches. Archaeological evidence suggests that many patients survived the procedure, as evidenced by bone growth around the trepanation site. This indicates that the ancient Greek physicians had a good understanding of the risks involved and took good care to minimize complications. Hippocrates was the first to recognize the importance of cleanliness in preventing infections during surgical procedures. He introduced the practice of using clean water and bandages to dress wounds, which significantly reduced the risk of infection and improved patient outcomes. This practice laid the foundation for the development of modern sterile techniques, which are now an essential part of any surgical procedure. So the next time you're in the operating room, remember to thank the ancient Greeks for keeping things clean and tidy. The ancient Greeks were among the first to use aloe vera for its medicinal properties. The plant was commonly used to treat wounds and skin conditions. Its soothing and healing properties were highly valued. Interestingly, the use of aloe vera in ancient Greece can be traced back to the writings of famous physician Hippocrates. Herophilius, a Greek physician who pioneered the practice of systematic dissections on human bodies. This allowed him to study the structure and function of organs and tissues in unprecedented detail. As a result, he made numerous significant discoveries in the field of anatomy, such as the identification of the nervous system and the distinction between veins and arteries. His work laid the foundation for modern anatomical knowledge and advanced the understanding of human health and disease. Herophilius made significant contributions to our understanding of the brain's structure and functions. His work laid the foundation for modern-day neuroscience. He was the first to identify and describe various parts of the brain, including the cerebrum, cerebellum, and the brainstem. He recognized that the brain was the seat of intelligence and the source of sensation and movement. 
he also made important discoveries about the nervous system, including the distinction between sensory and motor nerves.